In today's beginner video, we're talking all about structs. We're going to talk about how they're similar to classes, but mostly how they differ and when to use each one. And that really boils down to reference types versus value types. And that's a very, very common interview question. So it's a pretty important topic. But before we dive into all that, I got to thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. All right, as I mentioned in the intro, classes and structs uh, share a lot of similarities. So I did a video all about classes. I'll link to it in the description. If you're not familiar with classes, definitely go check that out. We're, we're kind of building on top of that concept here to explain structs and the difference between the two. And speaking of the differences, let's talk about reference types versus value types. So right away, classes are reference types, structs are value types. So what does that mean? Well, a reference type points to specific data in memory, whereas a value type, you know, gets copied and a new instance of it gets created all the time. And I know that may have sounded confusing. Let me use a common analogy that I like to use that I think will help clear it up. And that is the difference between a Google Sheet and an Excel spreadsheet. So a reference type, which is like a class, is kind of like a Google Sheet, right? If I shared a Google Sheet with you, I'm going to see your changes. And if I make changes, you're gonna see that, right? There's like one source of truth that we can both edit and change. So that would be a reference type. And we're gonna demonstrate this after I explain this, by the way. Uh, a value type would be like the Excel spreadsheet, right? Where I can create a great Excel spreadsheet, I can email you a copy, and now you have a copy of it. Whatever you do and edit to your Excel spreadsheet doesn't affect my spreadsheet, right? There's a copy that you can use and manipulate however you like. That would be a value type like the structs. So hopefully that gives you a basic idea of what's going on with reference types versus value types. Now let's demonstrate it in some code here. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we're building on top of that class video. So check that out if you're not familiar. We have our developer class here and let's talk about that reference type I just mentioned, right? So here I have a develop an object named Sean, which I'm initializing a developer and I'm giving it the name Sean, the job title, iOS engineer, years experience five, right? These are the properties that are attached to my developer class. And this is where the similarities between structs and class are, you're, you're creating these uh, objects that have properties on them. They can also have functions, uh, et cetera. And if you're not familiar, this is the initializer for my class. Uh, more on that in a second when we get to structs, because structs get a special initializer. We'll talk about that. But to catch you up here, we're, we're talking about class right now. Uh, and I have a instance of Sean, which is a class developer, right? So what I can do, if I create uh, var Joe equals Sean, now I just created uh, a new variable called Joe, and I made it equal to Sean. So right now the variable Sean on line 16 is pointing to this developer I created this data, that same spot in memory, and I also created another variable called Joe that's pointing to that exact same data. Remember I said a reference type points to the same area. It's kind of like one Google sheet that two things can change. So watch what happens when I do uh, joe.name equals, and I change that name to Joe, All right? If we run our playground, I'll move my head here. And if I click on this developer, you can see the name here. Uh, the name is Joe. So now watch what happens when I just do Sean.name. Now run it here. You can see Sean.name equals Joe. Because again, uh, the variable on line 18 and the variable on line 16 were both pointing to the same object in memory. So when Joe changed the name, the name of Sean also changed. Again, it's like a Google Sheet. So again, that's what happens when you have a class and that is a reference type. Now let's move on to structs. And really all we have to do to change this to a struct up here on line three, is type struct, make it a struct. Now structs have what's called a member wise initializer. Like for a class, you have to have this init, uh, but for a struct, uh, you have kind of a default, you know, member wise initializer. And what it does, it just kind of infers that like, hey, I know I should have a name, job title, years experience. And actually I don't need these to be optional. That was just left over from the, from the class video. Apologies for, for the confusion. But let me prove this to you, right? We don't need that init for a struct. So let me actually get rid of this. Well, let me comment this out first because I don't want Xcode yelling at me. And then I'm going to delete this Sean uh, variable here. We're going to create it again. But just to show you what the member wise initializer is, uh, we get that by default. It's pretty smart, right? So I can do var Sean equals 
developer. And then if I get the initializer here, you see, I get the uh, completed initializer right there. And then we can do Sean, job title, iOS engineer, and years experience five. So like I said, that was just uh, when you do a class, you have to have the init with the struct, you don't. So let's come back down to our, uh, our little exercise here. We'll uncomment that. And then I'm gonna run it again. We're gonna walk through it, right? Because remember what I did first was I created a new variable called Joe and I made it equal to Sean. Well, when it was a class and it was a reference type, that also changed Sean. But because now we're a struct, we're a value type. So a copy of Sean gets created and gets assigned to Joe. So when I do Joe.name equals Joe, cool. As you can see here again, uh, the name is uh, Joe. So I changed the Joe variable from line 12. That name is Joe. But now you can see below, which you probably already saw, uh, Sean.name is still Sean. Because again, this is just like me emailing the spreadsheet, right? Joe is just a copy of Sean. It's not the original Sean. So hopefully that explained the difference between reference type and value type. Like I said, that is almost certainly going to be asked uh, on a job interview for a junior uh, iOS developer. Uh, you may be wondering now, like, okay, I get the similarities, I get the reference type versus value type, but like, you know, when would I use a struct versus a class? Like, what's a good kind of rule of thumb? A main benefit of a struct, and this is, will also help you on your interview question, is that they are lightweight and performant. And the reason being is because structs don't have inheritance, right? So classes, you can subclass it, right? You can have parent classes, subclasses. Uh, for example, UI button is a subclass of UI view. You know, it's a lot of subclassing going on in UI kit. Um, that's another benefit of Swift UI. Swift UI deals with a lot of view structs, and those can get copied and destroyed and recreated very quickly, very performant. And Swift UI relies on that, whereas UI kit relies on a lot of inheritance and subclassing. So that's a ma major difference here. But uh, if you need to subclass developers, say I wanted to say I had this general class called developer, but I wanted to create a subclass that had its own behaviors called iOS developer. Well, if I wanna do some subclassing, I need to be a class. You can't subclass uh, a struct. However, if you don't have a need for that inheritance, that subclassing, uh, it's a good rule of thumb to, to go with a struct there. So again, to wrap that up, classes and structs are similar in that it's a way to create objects with you know properties, uh, functions, et cetera. But the main difference is reference type versus value type. Remember reference types, which is a class, is like that Google sheet where there's one source of truth and a couple different things can change it. Whereas a struct is a value type that gets copied every time it's used. And you know it's like the Excel spreadsheet getting emailed that you can change your own copy and nothing happens. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of structs, the difference between structs and classes, value types, reference types. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.